Good evening, dear viewers. Welcome to Lift Up Your Hearts. My name is Leah Kanyangi, and today we are joined by, of course, my co-host. She'll introduce herself. Good evening, dear viewers. My name is Esther, and it's always a pleasure to be on board. Amen. It is a privilege to be of service in God's vineyard. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity yet again to just um, come here and commune with you, commune with our dear viewers, Lord. How I pray that you may cleanse us from unrighteousness and may the words we speak be, be anointed by the Holy Spirit, Lord. Guide us and lead us every step of the way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We'll be taking a short break, but stay tuned. We'll be back with a Bible study. Welcome back, dear viewer, to our Bible study. Um, I wanted to I wanted to title it "Who is talking to you," or "Who are you talking to?" But Esther wanted um, what explicit obedience. So either way, we are just excited to share this portion of the scripture with you, and we hope that you are going to learn together. So the chapter is um, chapter thirteen of First Kings. Chapter thirteen of First Kings. Chapter 13 of 1 Kings. Let's just see, um, explore this theme of explicit obedience and how it applies in our lives. Read for us, Esther, 1 uh, Kings chapter 13, verse, uh, from verse 1. What does verse 1 say? And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Yeah. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and yes. said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, mm -hmm. Josiah by name. Mm -hmm. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burned upon so thee. So here basically we see that this man was a prophet of God, mm. and he was sent on a special mission. To the king. To the king, mm -hmm. yes. And he, he, he came at a time when Israel was in apostasy. They were, their hearts were not wholly given to God. So he's a man with a special mission, with special instructions from God. And this let's find from, um, from verse 7 and 8. What does verse 7 and 8 say? It says, And the king said unto the man of God, yes. Come home with me. Come home with me. And refresh thyself, mm -hmm. and I will give thee a reward. Mm -hmm. And the man of God said unto the king, if thou wilt give me half thine, ha half thine house, yes. I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this, in this place. place. Mm -hmm. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. Eat no bread, mm -hmm. nor drink water, mm -hmm. nor turn again by the same way that thou comest. Yes. So here basically we're, we're looking at this man this prophet has been given specific instructions not to eat not to drink mm. so eating and drinking are wonderful things to do but they're not they're not to be done when god has explicitly said do not do this and he tells the king even if you give me your whole house i'm not going to come in um, and dine with you mm. no matter what you do i will not disobey the word of god and in verse 9 he affirms that it's, indeed it is the god. word of god yeah. that told him do not go and do this and do that explicit obedience explicit obedience when the word of God has told you not to do something. Remember, um, let's just revisit also the story of Eve when God said, thou shalt surely die. You know, do not eat this specific fruit. And of course, we know how that came, you know, how that turned out. But let's um, 
continue with this story uh, of how this man at this point is just standing for the word of yeah. God and he's defending it. Yes, he's even half the in-house, he's defending it. But what happened in verse, in verse 11? Verse 11. Yes. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, mm -hmm. and his sons came and told and told him all the works that the man of God had done mm -hmm. that day in Bethel. Mm -hmm. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. To their father. Mm -hmm. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, mm -hmm. which came from Judah. Yeah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon. Mm -hmm. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. I am, yes. And then also in verse 15, he continues to say, Then he said unto him, Come home with mm -hmm. me and eat bread. So this man has been looked for yeah. by an old prophet, yeah. someone who has experience, someone who knows how serious the command of God is. Yeah. Uh, but this old prophet goes and looks for him and says, are you the one? Yeah, you know, I've heard about you. And says, yes, I am. And he invites him in in verse 15. Come. But in verse, in, in verse 16, the prophet reiterates the exact same words he said in verse 9. Mm. And he says, um, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread, nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me. For it was said to me by who? By the word of the by Lord. By the word of the Lord. So what was said to him? He repeats the instruction. What was the instruction? Thou shalt eat no bread, no bread, nor drink water there, mm -hmm. nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. That thou camest. But then in verse 18, you see the deception now coming in. Yeah. The deception coming in. And this old man tells this young prophet, no, by the way, eh? I am a prophet also as thou art. <laughs> yes. And already you've been told this is an old prophet. So he looks, uh, uh, he looks um, much more experienced. He looks like someone who, you know, is serious. Um, and an angel, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring, bring him, him back, back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. And drink water, full stop, yes. But he lied unto mm -hmm. him. So this man has found this uh, very, very eager and fervent uh, servant of the Lord and tells him, but you know those instructions? No, let me tell you. An angel of the Lord visited me and told me by the way you can come in eh, and eat mm -hmm. and drink with me. Yeah. So and he is contradicting the word of the Lord. Exactly. And, and, the, and, and, the, and the first part of the verse that says, mm -hmm. I am a prophet also like you. You know, yes. we are in this together. We are in this together. This God that you're yeah. talking about, I also yeah. know him. I you also know, know and him. And he has also been talking to in me. Fact, I'm, I have also, I'm also in this ministry yeah. and I've been for the past many years, 10 years. So, you know, young lady, young man, just relax. I also understand it. Eh? Even there are some things God can understand. He, did he say this? No, you're misinterpreting. He, God is not that harsh. He's deceiving this young man. He's deceiving him. This young man, at some point, he knows exactly what God told him to do. He knows exactly what God told him not to do. He knows the commandment of the Lord. But someone else who is more experienced has come in to derail his mindset. Yet this man said, I received this from the word of the, the Lord. Lord. Now we know that God does not contradict himself. That God, is true. God does not contradict himself. If God was able to give him those same instructions directly to him, then if he had changed his mind... He would have of, let the, he, the prophet know. Yes, he would have let the prophet know, of which we know that God is not double-minded. He does not change. He, he is resolute. He's an absolute supreme being. And so this old man is coming to deceive this young man. And this young man says, you know what? Maybe he has some sense. Maybe he has some sense. It might be even in our own spiritual lives, um, we, might be, we, we might be thinking, we might be in a dilemma, you know, whether to choose to do this for God or not. 
but someone else who is experienced perhaps older in ministry perhaps older even in just um age comes to you and say you you know you're you're, you're still young just relax you know you're you're just on too much fire you know we've been here been there we understand where you are just relax a bit god is not so stringent on his requirements yet the bible requires explicit obedience from us did god say you know did god tell you to do this then do that did god tell you not to do it then do not do it do yeah. not do it yeah and and it's very true i think the the fact that someone tells you um something that contradicts the explicit instruction of god yes. then it 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 means that that is not mm. it's not the right way to mm. follow mm. whoever that person is as you have said mm. whether they be older than us whether they be mm, they have had experience in in ministry or or just some sort of um uh, influence you know and we might be down there like for example mm -hmm. this young prophet this yes. is the old prophet yes. you know yes. the old prophet has yes. been there yes. god has talked to him maybe mm -hmm. but so long as whatever they say is against god's explicit command mm -hmm. then it is not worth yeah and just back to the theme of whom are you talking to exactly. or who is talking to you <laughs> And what are they saying? Because sometimes you might entertain people, you know, um, you might entertain slanderous people. Like when you go to the book of Second Samuel, you see David running away from Absalom, meeting Ziba, who was one of the servants of Mephibosheth. And here we see Ziba slandering his master, saying, you know, even my master was not planning to come with you. And David just takes in that word. But when he goes back to Jerusalem, he asks, he asks this grandson of Saul, but he says, that is not true. In fact, I wanted to follow my Lord. But David had listened to a wrong report. He had listened to someone who was um, aimed at hurting the other person. So sometimes when you come to think of it, perhaps you might be in conflict with someone or just not in good terms generally. But someone else takes advantage and comes in, you know, to just fuel the fire. They even did this. Can you imagine? Can you believe it? And that induces much more conflict, you see, in any relationship. So we should be careful to whom we are listening to. Is this the express command of God? Just getting back to our story. Is this the express command of God? Then do not listen to someone else who comes and says that... Um, I'm also, um, I'm also an old prophet, you know, and you can just dishonor the commandments mm. of God. You can just do this and get away with it because that is not true. Yeah. That is not true. And, and, and just even revisiting the story of Lot yes. and, and, and when the angels came to, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to yes, ask yes, them out yes. of, out of, yes. out of. Sodom, yeah. you remember what the wife did? Yeah. She looked back, she looked which was back. against mm. God's command. God said, do not even... Don't. Don't even look just back. Just go. Just yes. flee. But <laughs> she looked back. And mm -hmm. you know her fate. Mm -hmm. She turned into a pillar of salt. Yeah. And so from that we can learn that God is very, very particular. Mm -hmm. He is resolute in his commandments. And when he says this, as his children... Mm -hmm him being our father we really need to obey to the letter not halfway mm -hmm. you know we need to go all the way mm -hmm. in obedience mm -hmm. um you, you just um you reminded me on chapter 19 of genesis chapter 19 of genesis when you're just looking at reviewing the story of lot yeah. um i love how ellen white puts it in in patriarchs and prophets and she says if lot had taken the instructions of the lord seriously then maybe his wife would have been saved it's because of lot's complacency that the wife saw that is is it really true as everything i've built in sodom is it just going to in to vain you know it is because of his complacency but if lot had been serious about what god had commanded if lot had been serious about not even settling in sodom in the first place he would not have found himself in the situation in which he was um just look at verse 14 verse 14. genesis chapter 9 verse uh, chapter 19 sorry verse 14 and it says it says, and yes. Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, mm -hmm. which married his daughters, yes. and said, Up, get you out of this place, mm -hmm. for the Lord will destroy this city. Mm. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. He in seemed law. as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. What does that mean? They didn't take him seriously. But why did they take him seriously? <laughs> if, if, today I ca if today I came home and said, you know, by the way, this place where we are living in Esther, God is going to destroy it. 
but you say, you know, he's just joking. M might there be something in my character or yes. the way in your demeanor yes. or even the way you communicate? In how I've been living that might make you think this person is not serious. This person is not serious. And if you read um, the commentary, if you read the commentary in Patriots and Prophets, it says that had Lot been a stringent, obedient servant of God, then his sons-in-law maybe would have taken him seriously. seriously. But of course not to place the blame on him because anyway they were warned and this was a righteous man. But there is a way in which if we, if we are serious about God, other people around us will sense this, the, the same type of seriousness. If you are serious about obeying God, then it does not matter who comes to you and says, do, do not take that step. Do not take that step. But you see, um, in, um, when, you, when you decide to go contrary to his requirements, then it means it, it meant nothing to you. It meant, and I think the mistake we usually we usually make in our mindsets is to think that God, God is going to understand. I'll just disobey this once. I mean, it's just an exam and it's just a day. God is going to understand. He understands many things, but <laughs> at some point, he will cease to understand our continuous disobedience mm -hmm. against his explicit word. Yeah, and you know uh, the obedience that he gives us is not uh, because he he just wants to to act supreme. It's no. to protect us. Exactly. It's to protect us, such that when he says, "Do not go to such and such a place," it's n you, it's not helping him. It's protecting. <laughs> it's protecting us. It's very true. It's God's us. prohibitions are actually a guide to life. Yes. And 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 at that moment, we'll want to recall that verse that says, mm -hmm. "There's a way that seems." Right, and to yes. a man. Yes, the ends that is Proverbs 16.25. It's actually 14.12. Yeah. 14.12, 14, yes. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. There is a way which which seems right unto a man, yeah. but the end thereof are the ways of death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, it just rubber stamps the fact mm -hmm. that we should not mm -hmm. lean on our own understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And also 16.25 says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end there just this the exact, twin verses the twin verses <laughs> yes but just the exact same thing mm. that this a, a, a way that may look pleasant to you and you may try to justify it however way you see it but you know in your own way in your senses that god is not leading in this business god is not leading in this in this relationship god is not leading in this school work god is not like you know whatever circumstance you're in God has not given you express instructions to do what you're doing, but you still justify and rationalize and continue, you know, undertaking that activity even against God's in, uh, express conviction. Yeah. Um, I just appreciate the lesson we learn in Second Kings chapter 13. Look at how, how this prophet who had made a mighty proclamation, what was the end of his life? It's actually first Kings. Yeah, sorry, first Kings, first Kings 13. What was the end of his life? He made a mighty proclamation, but, and it came to pass as they sat at the table, verse 20, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. Mm -hmm. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord God commanded thee, but thou camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk in the place of which the Lord did say unto thee, Eat no bread, drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of your fathers. Your fathers, of your fathers. And of course, a lion oh. met him and just slew him and his carcass was thrown away. Mm -hmm. Someone who has been mightily used by God. But just one small disobedience, one small disobedience leads to his downfall. How many times have we seen that? Hey, s someone who is mightily used, mightily favored by God. Think about even from Lucifer. You know, the ex he, 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 was, he was the third, I think, in, after the Godhead. Then it was him. But pride entered his heart and sin dominated him. Just one small thing led to his downfall. Led to his downfall. Yeah, last comments. I think for us, the lesson we take away we, from here is just to be... To, to just follow to the letter God's word. Yes. You know? yes. yes. 
Yes. And we should not lean on our own understanding yes. or those of the others around us, but we should actually trust in God. Yes. Yes. And that is that should be the basis through which we act. Is it his word? Mm -hmm. Is it in accordance to his command? Mm. Wow. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, dear viewers, for staying with us until this point. First Kings chapter 13 is rich in lessons. But just one of the major things we learn is that we should obey God. Whether it makes sense or not, we should just obey him. Because everything he does and everything he thinks about us, it's for our own good. So is God perhaps convicting you about a certain situation in your life you know is not right and God is not leading and he's telling you, just terminate. Stop. You know, stop where you are. I'm not in this thing. I'm not leading and I'm convicting you to stop it. Let's heed the voice of God. Let's heed the voice of God. Let, let us allow him to show us the direction in which we are supposed to go. Let us allow him to be exactly what he is. And that is the Lord in our lives. Let us obey him. Ask him for strength. Ask him for the will um, to obey him. To obey him. You can talk to us on our social media pages um, on Facebook, Hope Channel Kenya, and on Twitter at Hope underscore Kenya. And you can also continue sending your prayer requests through the numbers on the screen. God bless you. We'll be back with testimony and prayer. God bless. <laughs> I need you to be a little bit of 
Welcome back, dear viewer, to our program, um, Testimony and Prayer, it is. And today I'd just like us to share about um, a, a certain brother and friend, um, very dear to yeah. us. Yeah. Yes, Ooh. and just how prayer assisted in transforming and still is yeah. assisting in transforming his life. And so um, he's known to us for many years, born bred in a Christian home. Christian family but somewhere along the way he just veered off Christianity and was no longer interested in the things of God of course got baptized but it was just it as a sometimes it's ceremonious yes you know ceremonious <laughs> and maybe out of pressure but um, didn't have a personal relationship with God and so in in our interactions we just came to realize that indeed he wasn't he, he wasn't too interested in the matters of God yeah. and there was very enough into the world and engaging in that which um, the devil would delight in and God would be ashamed. But coming to think of it as we later came to share um, about his life and we just decided to go to, to the Lord in prayer yeah. about his life. Mm about his life because many a times you may you may look at someone who is who, who is not living the Christian life that they're supposed to be living and you're wondering what are you supposed to do mm. well you may choose to go and tell someone else to backbite that person you may choose to talk evil about him you may choose to not do anything because it's not your life anyway but um, I just thank God that he convicted us to bring it to the lord in prayer because yeah 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 because sometimes you 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 can't even talk to that person or you, you are afraid you sometimes can't. even you do maybe you might not even have that relationship or they might not even listen to you in the first yes, place yes. and so at in in such situations mm -hmm. just approaching god in prayer mm -hmm. is is quite um a useful mechanism to mm. be able to um dedicate that person to the lord because they do not have to know and you, you, it doesn't have to be something public. It's something you do in the closet, but the results, God rewards it. Yes, and the results are seen. So um, at the end of the day, we are still his creatures. We are still his children. And so he knows how to reach each and every heart. He knows the person he'll find in an evangelistic series. Mm. He knows the person he'll <laughs> find through a prayer program. He knows the person he'll find through intercession. Mm -hmm. He knows the person he'll find through good influence. He mm. has various ways of reaching ev each and every one of his children. And so just praying about his life and getting him to start interacting with us was just a blessing, was just a blessing because... Um, in our interactions, even 
just mentioning the Bible. And this is another thing. Do not be shy, you know. Like, let us not be shy of this word of God, yeah. you know. When, because sometimes someone you think is disinterested might actually be interested, interested. in what you're trying to hide from them. And so talking, about, talking to him in random interactions just about church or he asks, where have you been? I've been to church. You know, what did you learn? Or do you, do you, do you think about this? And us also showing interest in his welfare, yeah. in his welfare. You know, uh, it reminds us of um, that quote. Um, it's somewhere um, about Christ, um, the mechanism he used to reach out to people. Yes, yes. He mingled with them as one, one who, who desired, desired their, their good, good, you know. Yes. And so um, the very first basis through which someone will even get to listen to you is if they see that you actually care about mm -hmm. their life, mm -hmm. you know. You actually care about the other things that are happening in their life. How are you? How is your job? How mm -hmm. is your family? Mm -hmm. You see, and from that point then they can appreciate your concern about their spiritual lives you know mm -hmm. and that's why it's important that we we try to um try to um have a you know some kind of um uh what can i say like we try to reach out to these people even be their friends you see be their friends and then from that point they they they'll see that you actually care for them mm -hmm. you care, your, your, your concern is genuine mm -hmm. yeah yes and so um over time um of course he started sharing with with us um, about his life and what was going on and just opening up about his desire to have a relationship with God and to have God reign in each and every area of his life. So this was such a blessing because when you look at his circumstances, I mean, he had every reason to complain. He had every reason to complain. Perhaps things are not going well for him financially, but just having him come out and just having that desire to know God was a blessing. It 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 it, it indeed it still is. Yeah, it and still the, and the is. fact that um, well, he is carrying God into the things that he is doing. Mm. You see, asking for God's blessing, yeah. help me through this, help yeah. me through my venture. You know, it's it's such a blessing to see him reach out to God and to think that. The things you have been praying for, because, because yeah, you've been praying, you know, it's like you have a box where, yeah. you know, you're praying over the same thing, the same yeah. thing, the same yeah. thing for the same person, the same person, and, and it's like nothing is happening. Mm. But now when you see someone is coming around mm. and you just glorify God because you know that God, through his spirit, is working yeah. in the heart. God is tugging at his heart because, you know, in... in in John chapter 6, verse 44, it says, No one can come to me unless the Father exactly brings him. The Father. Yeah. So this is just the Holy Spirit bringing him closer and closer to God. And so this, might, this is actually an encouragement, perhaps for someone who is at home and, and, wonder, and wondering, like, I really want this friend of mine. I really want this family member. I really want this workmate, this schoolmate um, to know God. And you... you you wonder how that will come to be because where they are right now, they're so far from even being interested in things of, of the world. They're so far from being interested in things of God. And it can really, it can be a, a challenge to us as human beings to understand. But remember God, remember God, he works in mysterious ways. He works in mysterious ways. And when Christ says in John chapter 17, when Christ is interceding for his disciples, it is to teach us something. Because when we remember uh, there's a time we, we did intercession, when you intercede with someone, that is a file that is going to be worked on. Yeah. That is a file that is going to be worked on. And we have seen this even through the life of of the friend that we that we are sharing with you <laughs> yes today we have seen this through his life and we continue to see this his desire even to pray yeah, he went to pray when you're together. He says, no, I, I want to pray. And I can you remember that time he prayed. It was so delightful. It was delight. You, you feel like, wow, well, being an audience, you know, <laughs> rather than a participant in the prayer. But it's because even the words of his prayer was just words of surrender, words of giving his life to God. And in my heart, I couldn't help but think, yes, Lord, this is an answered prayer. This is an answered prayer. And so after years or after months of, you know, interceding for this certain individual, God is now opening up himself to him. 
So it's just a blessing. It's an encouragement. If you're interceding for someone, do not give up. Even if the, the situation is becoming worse. Remember the children of Israel had to go around Jericho. Perhaps you just oh, um, seven times for the walls to, to come down. Perhaps you just on your second round. Yeah. So do not give up. Do not give up when you're interceding for someone. Do not give up because God is going to come into that person's life and is going to transform that person. Whether you see it, whether you do not see it, we know in the Bible that the just shall live by faith. And so this is our faith. Uh, faith is the victory. And so this is our faith that Christ is going to transform the life of the person you desire to be transformed or the life of your loved one whom you desire to come into the knowledge of God and into the knowledge of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Yes. So um, on to our, our prayer requests. Um, I'd like you to, well, remember so much has been happening around the country. Um, remember the families that have lost their loved ones through various road accidents and um, that God may comfort them in a special way because you know this is the festive season so many people are traveling and it's just unfortunate that some of us have lost their, lo their loved ones or some of us you know have lost their lives through a very very unfortunate um, happening like an accident so just remember such families pray for their children pray for the wives left behind pray for um, the husbands left behind and just the family in general and also pray for the people who are planning to travel that they may travel safely that god may guide them even during this festive season yeah <coughs> okay let's pray heavenly father how we praise your name lord how we lift you up, how we pray that our, our service, Lord, may be acceptable before your throne, Lord. Draw closer to us, Heavenly Father, this moment as we call unto your name, Lord. How we pray for cleansing from our sins, how we pray for forgiveness, Lord, from our iniquities, how we pray for grace and favor before your sight, Lord. We are thankful for this Father that you have brought us. We are thankful for this opportunity to approach your throne, Lord, in prayer. Mm -hmm. We are thankful, Lord, for this program, Lord, where we get to commune with you, where we get to pour out our, our, heart, our hearts, our desires, our requests before your throne, Lord. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this far you have brought our country, Lord. Yet you know so many families are grieving, Lord, because of road accidents. They have lost their loved ones, Heavenly Father. And even some, Lord, are still nursing injuries, Lord. How we pray that you may comfort each and every family that has been affected, Lord, by the accidents on our road, Heavenly Father. How we pray that for those who have lost loved ones, Lord, you may comfort them in a very special way, Lord. Mm -hmm. We may not understand the pain that they are going through, Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. but we want to thank you because you know and you understand, Lord. You have them in your palms, Heavenly Father, and you're holding on to them. How we pray that you may dry their tears, Heavenly Father, and fill in that void, Heavenly Father, that their loved ones have left, Lord. For those who are still in hospital, how we pray for your healing hand upon them, that they may be able to they may be able to get better, Lord. How we pray for encouragement that you may strengthen our hearts, even through these difficult moments, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray for, 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 for just safe journey masses for those who are traveling, Lord. You know this is a festive season. People are going home to be with their families. Lord, be with us. Protect us, Heavenly Father, as we travel on our roads, Lord. Heavenly Father, we call upon your name. And even as we continue to go through our prayer requests for our viewers, bless them, Lord. And we pray that each and every, um, each and every one of them may, may be blessed. They may be able to get what they are asking from you in accordance to your will mm. and in the fullness of time. Mm. For this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' holy name. Mm. Amen. 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 And so... Um, just to uh, 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 other prayer requests, uh, another viewer says, hi, I am not in 
I'm not in good terms with my husband. Please do pray for me. Please do pray for me. And then, um, hi, good evening. Please pray for me. I'm having spiritual challenges. So spiritual challenges. We may not know specifically what. But, uh, and also another one who is interceding for a job. Who is interceding for a job. So let's just commit this prayer request onto unto the Lord because he says that he's willing to listen to us. He says in Jeremiah that I, I'm able, you know, call upon me. I'm going to show you great and mighty things that you have not known. And so we have a hope. We have an anchor that can keep even our despondent souls. Yeah, so let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the privilege of coming before you. Father, how I just present the needs of your children um, before the throne. I pray for our viewer who is not in, in good terms with her husband. I pray for our viewer who is lacking a job, Lord, and also our viewer who might be having spiritual challenges. I pray that you may come in, step into their situations and help them through this difficult moment that even right now they may not understand the difficulties they're going through but we know by by virtue of romans chapter 8 verse 28 that all things will indeed work together for the good of those who love you lord and so i just pray for a breakthrough in their lives that they may have financial breakthroughs for the one who is lacking a job and also for many others mm -hmm. who may be in this specific circumstance, yes. Lord. I also pray for peace and harmony in so many broken homes, mm -hmm. in homes where and there's no unity, Lord, in homes where they, they, there are continual disputes, Lord. I pray for children in such, um, in such circumstances. I pray for the Father, I pray for their mother, that you may touch their hearts in a very special way and please speak peace to them. Mm. Speak peace into their lives mm. that they may be able to know how to communicate with each other. They may be able to know how to present their needs to you. Mm -hmm. They may be able to know how to have a relationship with you because it is only this relationship that will enable them to draw closer to one another and that will enable them to um, to stand in their families as men, as women who have been called by your name. I also pray for um, perhaps uh, uh, our viewers who may be experiencing spiritual downfalls, Lord. Mm -hmm. You say that even though a man may fall, a just man may fall, but still he will rise up again mm -hmm. and you will remember such a one. How I pray that you may enable them to experience victory over sin in their lives. Enable them to obey you because many a times we may speak about obedience, but we know it is a very difficult thing as a human being. We are not used to obeying you, Lord. So touch our hearts in a very special way mm -hmm. that we may be inclined, transform our lives, that we may be able to know you even deeper and that anything you say in your word, we may be able to just follow and obey without any questionings. I pray for our viewers perhaps who may be experiencing demonic attacks, Lord. Mm -hmm. You have said in your word that once Christ came and he died for us and so he has gained victory on our behalf and it is this victory that we claim even in the lives of your children mm -hmm. that you may enable them to overcome mm -hmm. that the devil may cease having a stronghold in their lives mm -hmm. the devil may cease playing with their lives the devil may cease coming in coming in to destroy whatever you're trying to build in their lives and so I just surrender these lives mm -hmm. onto your able hands that you may speak into them that life may uh, come in and chase away the darkness mm -hmm. and that you may replace um, the enemy with your own presence mm -hmm. in their hearts and that they may be touched and be healed and healed indeed mm -hmm. for any other prayer requests we have not mentioned perhaps a viewer is struggling with a certain issue perhaps a viewer is struggling with with obedience, a viewer may, might be struggling with any other sin we might be able to think of. Lord, how I pray that you may step in and grant them victory, that you may step in and help them, Lord, help them through this narrow way. Because as you said, it is a narrow way. It is as difficult as it can get. But you have promised us that you're going to be with us. You have promised, us that, promised that through the floods, through the fire, mm -hmm. you're going to hold your children by their hands and so hold us lord because we are weak we are sinful human beings 
Grant us even your forgiveness and cleanse us, Lord, daily through your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And so, um, as, as we had just mentioned, you know, when you talk about um, when you talk about obeying God, it's very difficult sometimes because maybe he, st maybe he might be telling you to step out of a job. He might be telling you to leave a certain environment that you're used to. Remember Abraham being told, just go. I'm going to show you. I'm not, you don't even know where you're going. You don't know where your next food is going to come from. You don't know where your rent is going to come from, but God is telling you, I'm leading. Just go. It requires faith. It requires faith. Yeah. Last words. Well, it's 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 really been an eye opening Bible study. The fact that actually we have to be resolute yes. with our yes. with, with in, yes. in terms of our commitment mm -hmm. to God, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And the fact that also God means his word. Yeah. He does not he he means he, he means, means his what words. He he means his word, he but he does not mean them. <laughs> yes, he means his word, yes. his word, yes. but he does not mean them. Yes, <laughs> does not mix them. Mm. He is very particular mm -hmm. in relation to um, the commands that he has given us, and mm. so we need to take him very seriously. Yeah. Yes, and and that's just my 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 my. The lesson I have learned personally, mm, and mm. I hope the viewer too has been able to learn that. Yes. So thank you so much, dear viewers, for staying with us until this moment. Remember, um, during our, our last session, we were supposed to have um, a special topic on how to solve disputes in social relationships with our brother Elvis Abenga, who was not able to make it, but God willing, we'll be able to have such a session in the near future. So I hope you have been blessed. I hope you have been convicted to do what God is telling you to do, to step out in faith and obey him and enable him to be Lord over your life. And just in case you might be feeling like I've tried all these things and it, they're just not, things are not coming through for me and my life is just going down the drain and it's becoming worse. It's becoming worse. Well, Christ is still the head of the ship. Remember the ship was through um, was through troublous seas and the disciples were wondering what to do. Mm. But Christ was still in there and Christ was able to help them. He's going to help them. Only one thing, do not give up. Claim his promises. Do not give up on the Lord because he will not give up on you. Mm -hmm. Until next time, God bless you. Remember, you can send your prayer requests through the numbers on your screen. And you can also talk to us on social media and on Facebook, Hope Channel Kenya, and on Twitter at Hope underscore Kenya. God bless you. God be with you. <laughs>